Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about three components of the swing transform block. First, we are going to talk about the residual connection. Then we implement a layer norm. And we also talk about the pre-norm and post-norm, something that is introduced in swing transformer version two. And then we talk about the MLP block. Okay, let's start. Okay, now we have this class. We need to create residual. We need to create pre-norm. We need to create feed forward and we need to create window attention. Okay, let's start by creating residual first. Okay, I'm gonna put residual here. So basically this residual function is gonna have that skip connection that we have that you can see here, it's added here. Okay, okay, the next function that we need to create is this uh, pre-norm. Let's create that one. Okay, now we have this class uh, called pre-norm and we can see that uh, we are using nn dot layer norm uh, which is a pytorch function and the input to that is a, a dimension here which is basically uh, the number of channels to get a better understanding of the layer norm let's look at the paper group norm and inside the paper group norm there is a figure that shows the different type of normalizations and one type is called layer norm so in this layer norm definition we are normalizing the blue elements with respect to each other. But what we are gonna do uh, in this code is a little different. Let's look at the last layer uh, of our structure. So we saw that in the last layer, which was seven by seven by 768, each pixel is a token. And uh, we are gonna normalize each token with respect to itself. So for example, if I have a yellow token and I want to normalize that, I should not consider any element from the pink uh, token, okay? As a result, when we do layer norm here, our layer norm is a little different than what is described in group norm paper. For example, I could have one uh, pink token that we are going to normalize the elements inside this pink uh, token with respect to each other and independent from the other uh, tokens. So for example, I have another token here, which is yellow. And we are going to normalize the elements of that with respect to itself. Let's go back to the code. Okay, we use the layer norm and we are gonna put the number of channels as the input and that is gonna normalize each token with respect to itself. Okay, let's double check that with a numerical example. Okay, to test our pre-norm class, let's um, consider one numerical example. For example, I'm gonna define a random tensor here and the batch size is one and the height and width are two and two and number of channels is three. So it's basically, uh, we have four tokens and the number of channels is three and uh, if I print this input, I get this. So it's gonna be uh, four tokens and each one has three channels. And after that, we are gonna use the layer norm. And if we use the layer norm and put the uh, channel C as the input to that, so it's gonna give us the output. And if we print the output, uh, we are gonna get this. And if you look at each uh, token now we see that is normalized with respect to itself for example uh, we normalize this token or we normalize this token and so on okay by doing this we are able to uh, normalize each token and perform the layer norm and if you look at the pytorch website we can see the definition of layer norm and there is a one example here that shows how to do that for uh, NLP example and that is basically what we are doing so our input to layer norm is basically embedding dimension for us is uh, the number of channels okay the other point that we want to mention about layer norm is that uh, in swing transformer version 2 so if you look at the figure 1 here so in figure 1 we can see for uh, version 1 we have a uh, layer norm before attention and layer norm before multi-layer perceptron. But for version two, we can see 
uh, the layer norms are coming after attention or uh, after MLP. So they are basically post norm instead of per norm. And uh, we can easily modify our code uh, to do this. Okay, let's start modifying our code. So in our code, we just need to uh, change this line. So instead of having the norm uh, be performed first and then the function, so now we are doing the function and then we are doing the norm. So by doing this uh, simple uh, reordering of the functions, we turn the per norm to a post norm as mentioned in version two. Okay, now we have our layer norm ready. The other thing that we need to create is this uh, fit forward. So we are creating multi-layer perceptron that is used in the first block and the second block. Okay, let's add the class here. Now we have our fit forward class. And if you look at the fit forward class, we can see the input X is coming and then we use uh, net self.net and self.net is defined here as a fully connected two-layer neural network where the first layer uh, is nonlinear and for activation functions we are using glue and for the uh, second layer is just a linear layer and for the size of the uh, hidden dimensions so for hidden dimensions we are going to uh, use four times of the size of the input uh, the input here for us is the uh, number of uh, channels. For example, it is 96. When we get 96, we are going to multiply that by 4, and that's going to be the size of the uh, hidden dimension. Okay? Okay, to get a better understanding of this uh, GLU activation function, let's look at the paper uh, Gaussian Error Linear Units. Um, okay, in this paper, we can see in figure 1 a comparison of uh, GELU and uh, RELU and uh, we can see the orange line is the RELU whenever it's uh, negative it's zero but for GELU whenever it is negative it's not actually zero uh, it's gonna be a little negative like this and eventually it goes to zero so this is when it is negative and whenever it is positive it's not uh, exactly a linear function so you can see here it's a little far from a linear but eventually it goes to the linear function okay so this is our GELU function and we use this function as the activation function in our fit forward function okay